Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Why No One Plays. It's a series where I discuss champions in League of Legends that rarely see much play, if any at all, in both the pro scene and solo queue, especially recently. Since League is a constantly evolving game for better or worse, there might be times where certain champions have a high pick or ban rate that spans a patch or two, but overall, the game does remain relatively consistent on which champions remain popular and which ones are obscure. For this episode, let's talk about the champion that no one played before his rework, and he has stayed unnoticed after the rework. York. Poor guy, all he does is dig. Okay, so before we get started, allow me to post the disclaimer for this video as usual. This series is not meant to bash a champion and say they're bad or troll, nor to discourage anyone from playing them. If anything, I encourage you to give them a try to get a better understanding. Additionally, for anyone who does play and or main the champion in question, my intent behind why no one plays is not to hate on your main. Rather, just to create discussion over possible reasons as to why certain champions don't see as loyal or wide of a following as others. With that said, if you enjoy these types of videos, a rating would be much appreciated and also subscribe for more Why No One Plays videos. There's also a playlist in the description if you want to check out any other episodes. That aside though, let's get back into the video. Yorick is a very extreme case in the Why No One Plays series because as I've stated, he's a rework champion and usually champions that receive reworks, more specifically visual game updates such as Shen, Urgot, Mordekaiser, Fiddlesticks, Evelyn, etc. receive a huge boost in their popularity and play given that most if not all problems that negatively influence any reason a person would want to pick them up are addressed and fixed, right? Very few champions other than Yorick, if there are any besides him, have this unique situation where his play rate was horrendous and a full gameplay overhaul did almost nothing to address that. Obviously he's not as unknown as before, but he does certainly struggle to see any semblance of limelight ever since his update back in 2016. Aside from one single instance in 2019 where he was a pretty top tier pick thanks to some changes, He's almost never seen a pick rate higher than 3%, which is practically unheard of for any champion. Even other relatively obscure niche picks have a patch or two or three where they would be a well-contested pick either because they've become overpowered or something else. But for someone to consistently remain on the download, that's quite impressive, just uh, not in such a flattering way honestly. Similar to Darius who I made a Why Everyone Plays video about, Yorick is a juggernaut and therefore he bears the relative strengths and weaknesses of one high damage output, and solid resilience in exchange for having poor mobility. Unlike his peers though, he does possess decent range thanks to his ghouls, though he's not going to be out trading any ranged champions. His kit as a whole is also relatively simple, with nothing inconspicuous and for what the abilities are meant to do, I'd say he performs quite well at them. So this begs the question that you're all wondering, why does he have such a low play rate even after his rework? Fortunately, or actually rather unfortunately, it's basically one simple problem. Only thing is that one problem happens to just be a very big one. We all know Yorick to be a split-pushing raid boss, meaning a very well-fed Yorick can easily contend with 2-3 people by himself. That kind of trait is normally desirable among top laners given their main method of carrying games, being their ability to draw pressure like a lightning rod. However, Yorick has a weakness similar to Nasus in that they have the functions of a raid boss but a kit that's not really equipped to function in that way. Basically saying, Yorick is a very impractical champion for the job that he was meant to serve. And just in case you haven't watched my Darius video, let me quickly explain what a raid boss's best tactic is to winning games. Because of their high strength and equally high resilience, raid bosses have the potential to single-handedly win fights by placing the enemy team in sort of a catch-22 where focusing them first puts you at a disadvantage because the amount of time it takes to bring them down gives their teammates more than enough time to wipe out your whole team. But if you were to ignore them and focus on their teammates first, it would also put you at a disadvantage because any amount of freedom you enable for the raid boss likely spells death for one or two teammates, if not the entire team. Other champions like Darius, Alawi, Mordekaiser, who are well known for the 1v9 teamfight moments, embody the definition of a raid boss very compliantly with their extremely high base damage, resilience, and most importantly their area threat presence, in that anywhere remotely close to their general area is perceived as a dangerous place to be. And regardless of what champion you play or how fed you are, it is in your best interest to leave that area immediately. York faces a dilemma where he matches the characteristics of his fellow juggernauts, but trades almost all area damage in exchange for single target takedowns. In fact, a late game York can actually be one of the most dangerous opponents to face, because usually you're not fighting him 1v1, it's more a 6v1 with his maiden and ghouls. Because York possesses all the necessary tools to shut down a specific group of champions, this makes him an effective anti-carry, in the one subclass of top laners that isn't meant to be an anti-carry. Generally speaking, anti-carries are quite prevalent in the top lane, which is why going first pick in top lane almost always places you in a disadvantage, because hypothetically speaking, if both top laners knew how to play every champion that can be fielded top at the highest level, then whoever draws second will always win. 
Poppy, Timo, Quinn, Jax, Yorick, these are all examples of champions who can be extremely detrimental to the enemy team based on their team compositions. Of the ones I just listed, the only one that's a juggernaut is Yorick. See, the role of a juggernaut is not to be a threat to specific champions. Their job is to be dangerous to all champions, regardless of whether you're playing Caitlyn, Zed, Sejuani, Vladimir, Yumi, Garen. Juggernauts have to be equipped to deal with every single one of them regardless of the situation, if it's a 1v1, 3v3, or 5v5. And while Yorick can certainly outdamage any of them in a skirmish, it can be quite challenging to perform the same task within fights in larger numbers. Yorick's main source of damage output is roughly evenly split among himself and his summons. Shepherd of Souls allows him to spawn graves around him every time whenever enemies are killed, allowing up to 4 at maximum. The drop rates vary based on the enemy type, but from reading this ability, you can draw the conclusion that Yorick requires setup, much like Skarner and Alawi. A major aspect of its gameplay is conditional, consequently that means Yorick may struggle with consistency, since in a game like League, on-demand output and consistency are two driving factors behind a champion's popularity. It's what makes Alawi pick marginally less frequently than Darius, even though the former's range, damage, and sustainability is practically better than the latter. Similar to a lot of other juggernauts, Yorick has a basic attack empowerment in the form of Last Rites, which deals very significant bonus damage and heals him for a reasonable amount of health. And, if there are at least three graves with an activation range, he can recast the ability to spawn ghouls from those graves. Each of them attack autonomously, and in a swarm can melt down anyone's health bar. That puts Yorick's minions on the same scale of threat as Heimerdinger's turrets, if not even more. As for usual, all juggernauts have some movement-related spell that is somewhat conducive to their chasing potential. Yorick has two. Starting with Dark Procession, which spawns a little circle wall of graves around an area that can only be destroyed with basic attacks. Yorick and his teammates can walk through the terrain while enemies and neutral units cannot. This is a priority ability that any champion with either slow attacks or no mobility at all needs to avoid, because for all intents and purposes, Dark Procession is the same as Jarvan the Fourth's Cataclysm. Smaller, yes, but more spammable. This ability is arguably his best one. I know that sounds like a hot take given the impact of his E, but being able to essentially lock down any champion who doesn't have the attack speed nor mobility to quickly escape from this attack almost guarantees they will die because 4 seconds of not being able to move around is a scary thought, especially for squishy targets like AD carries. Unfortunately, given its long cast time and small area of effect, it is pretty easy to sidestep before it even comes out. But if it were any faster or larger, this ability would be borderline broken. Morning Mist is his second mobility tool. It shoots out a projectile that does percent current health damage and quite a bit of it, making it a decent tool for tank shredding. The point to make note of though is that it slows the target for 2 seconds. Not by much, but Yorick and his ghouls also gain 20% bonus movement speed when walking towards that target. It's a slow and a speed boost. Additionally, ghouls will be able to instantly jump to enemies that are targeted by Morning Mist. This ability grants Yorick two key benefits. The first is that it allows his ghouls a means of gap closing between you and your enemy, given that they're quite slow on their feet otherwise. The second is that it grants Yorick threat potential from range. Since the Mist has a max target range of 700, that means he can use this ability against even ranged champions, putting the Onerous on his targets to be quick on their feet to dodge this attack. His E for sure is a veritable threat, as being hit by it will usually be followed by a huge chunk of damage from his ghouls. Even then, many champions do have the means to keep away from him otherwise. Lastly comes his ultimate, Eulogy of the Isles, one of the big pet summons like Tibbers and Daisy. Each of these summons comes with a unique property. Tibbers goes on a rampage whenever Annie dies, Daisy is the tankiest of the three while also granting a knockup after three basic attacks. The Maiden, on the other hand, gives Yor two very special properties. The first, being able to summon ghouls instantly whenever he kills the target the Maiden is attacking, and more importantly, Whoever the Maiden's targeting will receive 3-9% max health bonus damage with each of Yorick's attacks. Fighting Yorick along with his Maiden and Ghouls can produce as much DPS as a 6 item Vayne or Master Yi. You do not want to be anywhere close to him in a 1v1 unless you're absolutely sure you can burst him down before he has the chance to unleash all that fearsome damage. Sadly though, unlike Daisy and Tibbers, the Maiden cannot be controlled manually and so that might lead to a couple janks here and there, but overall she is relatively reliable in terms of what you want her to do at any given time. See, Yorick's kit is engineered mostly to split push or fight with numbers advantage, not something a juggernaut needs. Though he is able to take down towers at extreme speeds, he lacks sufficient mobility or disengage to avoid enemy counters, and so usually, it's unsafe to go after inner or inhibitor towers unless you're absolutely sure no one is nearby to respond. This automatically makes him a worse split pusher because it's not necessarily about how fast you can take down towers, but more specifically, how hard you are to catch. Champions like Udyr, Trindamir, Zed, Camille, and Fior are notoriously good at breaking towers, not only because of their high damage, but because even if you try to catch them out, they have the means to escape and waste your time. 
Because of how committal in nature his split pushing is, Yorick can also be easily punished without proper map awareness as there's very little he can do to run away from pursuers. Additionally, he faces tremendous difficulty in establishing dominance during a teamfight since most of his damage is single target. Aside from Morning Mist, he has no area of effect damage, meaning he has to take down each target one at a time. And with no hard crowd control built into his kit, he may find himself having a hard time locking down even one target if he misses Dark Procession. Landing Morning Mist is usually not enough. If his opponent is being protected by Ajana or Nami, there's nothing much you can really do to get close to anyone. If we combine those elements together, Yorick presents himself as a very niche juggernaut whose strengths are very specific but not necessarily impactful or rewarding enough for the effort required to make him work well. And just like how I said with Skarner, Alawi, and Heimerdinger, if you have conditions built into a champion, they either have to be really freaking strong to incentivize players to put in the time and effort learning how to master them, or those conditions have to be easily accessible such as Orianna's damage coming from her ball, but she can very easily move her ball around with Q and E or Azir's main damage being his soldiers but he can spawn them instantly on command. Any condition that cannot be dealt with remotely and immediately is a huge turnoff for a lot of players since they want to be able to respond to any situation whenever possible. That is the main reason why Juggernauts in particular have such polarizing win rates, why Darius, Mordekaiser, and Garen are so popular and why Alawi and Yorg aren't. Sure, the latter group has debatably way more damage than the former, but many players would be perfectly fine sacrificing a little bit of damage if it means they can do it without jumping through any hoops. And that's not to say Darius, Garen, and Mordekaiser don't do that much damage because oh no, they, they most certainly can. Anyway, I think similar to Heimerdinger, Yorick's just another case where he's not meant to be a popular pick because of his design, but I don't think anything should be done to change that because his kit is what makes perfect sense for his lore and theme. Honestly, I think his rework was executed pretty competently, it's just that players don't really like that kind of style. Who knows, maybe one day Riot might bring back a split pushing meta or something? I don't know, we'll see. I think that's gonna be it for my thoughts on why no one plays Yorick though. I used to play him quite a bit back in Season 9 when he was super OP for a patch or two, but after that I haven't given him that much thought. To the Yorick mains watching, if you think I left out anything or if you disagree on any point, let me know in the comments section below. But if you enjoyed, a rating would be much appreciated and you're more than welcome to let me know any thoughts you have on Yorick, either positive or negative. And be sure to check out my playlist on other champions that no one plays in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more League videos like this, but for now that's going to be it. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon in the next video. Take care.